You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. Cars say a lot about who we are. It represents freedom for a lot of people. This season on Drive, I'm going to talk to all sorts of different people. I looked at car names. Yes. A- and yes. I found all the car names that have science or astronomically it's crazy. inspired. It's crazy. It's huge. It is. Okay, yes, sure. I happen to be CEO of Ford Motor Company. For me, it's all about cars, movement, and our mutual passion for things that get us around. This is Drive, and I'm Jim Farley. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated and time-consuming fast. Now you can assess risk, secure the trust of your customers, and automate compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more with a single platform, Vanta. Vanta's leading trust management platform helps you continuously monitor compliance alongside reporting and tracking risk. Plus, save time by completing security questionnaires with Vanta AI. Learn why thousands of global companies use Vanta to automate evidence collection, unify risk management, and streamline security reviews. Watch Vanta's on-demand demo at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber. The White House mobilizes a national effort to shield water systems from cyber threats and announces major investments in U.S. chip manufacturing. The U.S. and its allies issue fresh warnings on China's Volt Typhoon cyber threats to critical infrastructure. Microsoft streamlines 365 services with a unified cloud domain. Ukrainian authorities take down a credential theft operation. Lockbit claims another pharmaceutical company. A popular WordPress plugin puts tens of thousands of websites at risk. A breach at Mintlify compromises GitHub tokens. An Idaho man pleads guilty to online extortion. The SEC fines firms for AI washing. We've got part two of our continuing Learning Layers series with Joe Kerrigan and Sam Meisenberg, logging Joe's journey toward his CISSP certification. And password stuffing Pokemon. It's Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. Thank you for joining us here today. It is great to have you with us. The White House is rallying state environmental health and homeland security agencies for a critical meeting aimed at bolstering the cybersecurity defenses of the nation's water and wastewater systems. Scheduled for March 21st, this one-hour virtual gathering will spotlight the U.S. government's initiatives to enhance cybersecurity in the water sector, identify existing gaps, and encourage swift action from states and water systems. The initiative comes in response to increasing cyber attacks, notably from Iranian and Chinese state-sponsored actors, targeting vital water infrastructure, which pose a significant threat to the provision of clean and safe drinking water. In response, the Biden-Harris administration is urging collaboration to fortify the cybersecurity of water-critical infrastructure, with a particular emphasis on the Environmental Protection Agency's leadership role. Furthermore, the establishment of a Water Sector Cybersecurity Task Force is on the agenda, aimed at devising strategies to mitigate these risks. The Biden administration also announced a substantial investment in Intel to boost U.S. semiconductor production across Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon, committing up to $8.5 billion in direct funding and $11 billion in loans. This financial support aims to fuel a leap from manufacturing zero to 20% of the world's most advanced chips by 2030. The deal, negotiated by Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, is seen as crucial for national security and economic stability, 
addressing the U.S.'s current incapacity to manufacture advanced chips domestically. Intel's initiative, fueled by the bipartisan 2022 Chips and Science Act, represents the largest investment under the law to date, expected to generate 30,000 jobs and entail $100 billion in capital investments over five years, covering construction and equipment for new and modernized facilities across the four states. Meanwhile, the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, along with the National Security Agency, FBI, and international partners, issued a warning about potential cyber attacks from China's Volt Typhoon Group targeting critical infrastructure. This follows a February alert about the group compromising U.S. networks, highlighting the threat of disruptive or destructive attacks. The latest advisory aims to guide senior non-technical leaders, emphasizing the use of intelligence-informed tools for cyber defense, like the cybersecurity performance goals. It stresses the importance of implementing cybersecurity best practices, developing incident response plans, conducting exercises, and securing the supply chain by enforcing strict security standards and managing risks, including foreign influences. The guidance seeks to bolster defenses against sophisticated tactics, including living-off-the-land techniques used by attackers to evade detection. A bit of quick follow-up on Monday's story where we highlighted a breach affecting Fujitsu, the global brand with headquarters in Japan. A listener sent in a kind note to remind us that the Fujitsu UK Horizons scandal, the one we mentioned about the UK post office, is out of Fujitsu UK and not associated with other Fujitsu locations around the world like Ireland, Poland, or Spain. Thanks to our listener for the clarification. Microsoft is consolidating its Microsoft 365 services under the unified domain cloud.microsoft to enhance user experience and streamline administration. This move will simplify domain management for authenticated apps and services, bolster security, and facilitate tighter ecosystem integrity. Specifically, Teams, Outlook, and Microsoft 365 web applications will transition to this new domain. Developers must update Teams apps to the latest Teams JS client library before June 2024 to ensure functionality on the new teams.cloud.microsoft domain, which will feature a dynamic list of trusted domains. Those unable to update in time will remain on the existing domain until updates can be made. The shift to a dynamic trust list is aimed at reducing maintenance and supporting seamless app functionality across Microsoft 365 services. Of course, anytime there's a major transition like this, the baddies step up to take advantage of the potential confusion, so heads up for that. We note for clarity that Microsoft is a CyberWire partner. Ukrainian authorities have dismantled a significant cybercrime operation, arresting three individuals linked to the theft and sale of 100 million email and Instagram accounts on the dark web. Utilizing brute force attacks to obtain login credentials, the suspects offered these accounts to other cybercriminals, facilitating scams and fraudulent activities. The enforcement operation involved extensive searches across multiple cities, resulting in the seizure of computer equipment, phones, and cash, The ongoing investigation also explores potential collaborations with foreign entities, particularly those benefiting Russian interests. Crenetics Pharmaceuticals is probing a cybersecurity breach after the Lockbit ransomware gang claimed it had stolen from the Nasdaq-listed firm. The company noticed suspicious activity in an employee's account, which was promptly disabled, triggering a comprehensive incident response including engaging cybersecurity experts and notifying law enforcement. Despite the incident, Crenetics asserts that its operations and key databases remain unaffected. The company says they are determined to conduct a thorough investigation and fulfill any legal obligations. This incident coincides with Lockbit's attempt to recover from a significant law enforcement crackdown that disrupted its operations. Lockbit has been notorious for targeting pharmaceutical firms, among other global entities, with demands for a $4 million ransom from Crenetics, adding to the pharmaceutical industry's ongoing challenges with cybersecurity threats. 
A popular WordPress plugin, Automatic, developed by Valve Press, has been found to have critical security flaws affecting over 40,000 websites. The identified vulnerabilities expose sites to unauthenticated SQL queries and potential file download or SSRF attacks, respectively. Valve Press responded by removing the compromised component and adding security checks, including a nonce requirement for privileged user actions. A security breach at software documentation platform Mintlify compromised 91 GitHub tokens, potentially exposing private repositories. The breach, attributed to a system vulnerability identified by a bug bounty hunter, led to unauthorized access. Mintlify, which links to customers' GitHub repositories for creating software documentation, acted swiftly by revoking the affected tokens, enhancing security protocols, and patching the vulnerability. Initial investigations suggest limited unauthorized repository access, with ongoing efforts to ascertain the full impact. In response, Mintlify has notified users, tightened security measures, and initiated collaborations with GitHub and cybersecurity vendors to prevent future incidents. Users are urged to update their passwords, activate 2FA, and review API key permissions. Robert Purbeck from Idaho has pleaded guilty in U.S. federal court to computer fraud and abuse charges. Purbeck was accused of hacking medical clinics and a police department, impacting over 130,000 individuals. Using stolen dark web credentials, he infiltrated networks in Georgia and targeted additional victims nationwide. Purbeck, who went by the hacker names LifeLock and Studmaster, threatened extortion using sensitive personal data, including information about an orthodontist's child. Scheduled for June sentencing, Purbeck agreed to a $1 million restitution for his crimes. The SEC has fined two companies, Delphia Incorporated and Global Predictions Incorporated, a combined $400,000 for making false claims about their artificial intelligence capabilities in investment strategies. This practice, referred to as AI washing, involves companies overstating the use of AI to attract clients with the promise of data-driven decisions. The crackdown reflects the SEC's stance on transparency and honesty, as these sorts of misleading claims can harm investors. Both firms, without admitting or denying the allegations, agreed to penalties and cease and desist orders. Additionally, the SEC issued an investor alert on AI and investment fraud, stressing the importance of integrity in the burgeoning AI finance sector and the regulatory role in protecting investors from deceptive practices. We are shocked, shocked, that anyone out there would overstate the capabilities of artificial intelligence. Coming up after the break, in our ongoing Learning Layer series, Joe Kerrigan and Sam Meisenberg join up to discuss Joe's journey toward his CISSP certification. Stay with us. And now, a word from our sponsor, Know Before. It's all connected, and we're not talking conspiracy theories. When it comes to InfoSec tools, effective integrations can make or break your security stack. The same should be true for security awareness training. Know Before, provider of the world's largest library of security awareness training, provides a way to integrate your existing security stack tools to help you strengthen your organization's security culture. Know Before's Security Coach uses standard APIs to quickly and easily integrate with your existing security products from vendors like Microsoft, CrowdStrike, and Cisco, 35 vendor integrations and counting. Security Coach analyzes your security stack alerts to identify events related to any risky security behavior from your users. 
Use this information to set up real-time coaching campaigns targeting risky users based on those events from your network, endpoint identity, or web security vendors. Then coach your users at the moment the risky behavior occurs with contextual security tips delivered via Microsoft Teams, Slack, or email. Learn more at knowbefore.com slash security coach. That's knowbefore.com slash security coach. And we thank Know Before for sponsoring our show. Imagine a world where you're always one step ahead of cyber threats, where your defenses are impenetrable because you see what others don't. Welcome to Team Cymru's Threat Intelligence Solutions. With real-time access to the world's largest threat intelligence data ocean, they enable you to turn the tables on attackers. Transform your security from reactive to proactive through accelerated threat hunting and incident response, made possible through automation. Empower your team with visibility and insights to start defending your organization like never before. Team Cymru. Be the hunter, not the hunted. Learn more at team-cumry.com slash cyberwire. That's team-cymru.com slash cyberwire. My Hacking Humans co-host Joe Kerrigan has been on a journey to get his CISSP certification, and along the way, he's been checking in with N2K CyberWire's Sam Meisenberg. In today's Learning Layer episode, they continue their conversation. Welcome back to another Learning Layer segment. And on this one, we continue our conversation with Joe Kerrigan as he's getting ready and prepped for his CSSP. So, Joe, Mm -hmm. you're ready to start studying. Yes. (laughs) You told me last time that you were excited and you were anxious to get started. I'm curious, for a lot of people, this is such a daunting exam. There's so much stuff to learn. Yeah. So, like, where do we start? What's step number one? Uh, Step number one is I'm going to have to take that test, the, <laughs> the diagnostic test, yes. as it's called, yes. in this, uh, it's it's like a pre-test. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, the diagnostic test is going to go through all eight domains and mm-hmm. essentially give me an idea of, number one, how well I'm, um, I'm, I am already uh, and how, 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 uh, what I, where I might need to focus. Now, sure. to give you some context here, the I took the 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 pretest for the CC certification and I scored ninety six percent on that. So, <laughs> okay. so hang on, hang on. Let's stop. Let's stop. Right. First of all, as as my parents who are very strict academically on me growing up would say, if you got a ninety six percent, why couldn't you get a hundred? What happened to those other two questions, Joe? <laughs> well, one of them I disagree with the the being okay. marked wrong on. Right. Okay, so okay, so so you you got a ninety eight percent, right? Got uh, my follow up question is ninety six. <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'm giving you points for the okay. for the one that was scored <laughs> oh, <I> correctly. <laughs> so to kind of go back to the to the original question, you're going. Your plan is to take the CISB diagnostic in the same way that actually you started with the diagnostic for the CC. Correct. And yep. let me ask this question like this in a polite way. I don't think you're going to get a 96% on the CISB diagnostic. <laughs> I, I would be shocked if I'd be like, I would be shocked and elated if that was going to I, I am also with you. So what are you going to do with the with the result? What, what are you expecting? And then what are you going to, how are you going to use the results? How, what am I expecting? I'm expecting to do better than random chance. Sure. So, so, so if you play A for everything you get a 25%. Right. So if I get a 25%, I'm going to be like, all right, I really <laughs> need to sit down. And I don't know anything about this is what okay. I'm going to say. If I get a 50%, I'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, what is that? You're, you're guessing, you're guessing right 25% of the time. Right. And, and then, um, 
you know, if I got somewhere in the 75% range, I would be ecstatic about that. Sure. That would, I would be very comfortable with my knowledge if I scored 75 on this pretest. Sure. And for those of you who don't remember my learning layer from a couple of segments ago, I actually talked about the, there's real learning science data mm -hmm. that shows doing the diagnostic as a, and a pretest helps ensure better learning outcomes. Okay. So it's for the obvious reasons, like you were explaining, Joe, you get to study efficiently. You know your strengths and your weaknesses and you spend more time, right, on your weak, your weak areas and you can study efficiently. But also they think there's like a psychological sort of piece around taking a diagnostic where you can actually get more excited around the content because you have a bit of a challenge, you have a place to start, and then you sort of have a way to measure yourself by and it feels like you're making progress. So... That's a long way of saying I endorse your way to start. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with N2K products, every single one of our certification courses and even role-based training courses start with a diagnostic assessment for you know just the reasons that we were talking about. So Joe's going to take a 100-question uh, multiple-choice exam that's going to cover, as Joe said, all eight domains of, of CISB. Joe, what domain do you think is going to be your strongest and which domain will be your weakest? I'm going to say, right off the bat, strongest is probably going to be software development. Okay. That's where I think I'm going to be, because I've been a software engineer for most of my technical career. Got it. So I feel very comfortable with programming. Uh, the domain I'm, I'm not all that comfortable with is domain one, security and risk management, uh, mainly because my risk management stuff, uh, I, I get the idea of risk management. You measure likelihood and you measure, um, you measure impact. Mm -hmm. um, but there's been, uh, in my career, there's been some places where I've, I've, I've just not been able to grasp some things. So I'm a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit concerned about that domain. Okay. Well, Joe, I think we've had enough talk. You need to go take this thing, <laughs> and then we'll go, when we meet again, uh, you will have taken the diagnostic, and we'll chat a little bit about the results and figure out where to go from there. All right. I'll get on it. Good luck. <laughs> see if you can beat 96. We'll see. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. <laughs> That's N2K Cyberwire's Sam Meisenberg with my Hacking Humans co-host, Joe Kerrigan. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. And finally, the Pokemon company detected hacking attempts targeting some user accounts leading to a proactive reset of passwords for those potentially affected. An official alert on their support website initially highlighted the issue, but was later removed, with a spokesperson clarifying that there was no system breach, merely attempts to access certain accounts. To safeguard customers, password resets were enforced for a small fraction of users, about 0.1%, who were actually compromised by these attempts, Likely credential stuffing attacks where stolen usernames and passwords are tried on various platforms. 
Unlike some companies that have adopted mandatory two-factor authentication in response to similar incidents, the Pokemon company currently does not offer this security option to its users. Our gaming desk suggests the hackers thought they could Pika choose some accounts. Nice try, but no Pika for you. And that's the Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. You can email us at cyberwire at n2k.com. N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester with original music by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. We know there's an experience gap in cybersecurity, and companies are often enamored with the idea of building teams of superstars. But focusing on a team of unicorns just feeds the talent gap. Join N2K's Simone Petrella and Intuit's Kim Jones on Wednesday, March 27th, for an online discussion about the pivotal role security leaders play in shaping the security workforce landscape and how we can start showing up for the future of our industry. Visit our show notes for details and to register. When it comes to ensuring your company has top-notch security practices, things can get complicated and time-consuming fast. Now you can assess risk, secure the trust of your customers, and automate compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, HIPAA, and more with a single platform, Vanta. Vanta's leading trust management platform helps you continuously monitor compliance alongside reporting and tracking risk. Plus, save time by completing security questionnaires with Vanta AI. Learn why thousands of global companies use Vanta to automate evidence collection, unify risk management, and streamline security reviews. Watch Vanta's on-demand demo at vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber. Cyber.